Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Base Coat Basics. We are here in the booth of Createx and today we're going to talk about uh, whites, more specifically our metallic and pearl white line. Um, we're going to show you guys how you can achieve a simple change in a graphic undercoat uh, with just the textures that you can create from our metallic and our pearl line of, of colors. Obviously if you're using a solid semi-opaque color it's really not going to be that uh, dependent on what you see underneath because you can't really see through those colors but when you're using our sparkalescent colors or uh, transparents or especially our candies um, these will give you kind of a cool effect for a graphic separation without really changing or shading what you see underneath and just the actual texture of the, the metallics. So we're going to start. You guys can see I have my hood here. This is already uh, sealed up with our Autoborn Sealer White. So it's two coats of white over the whole panel and we'll separate them down uh, into five sections. You can see we're going to start with metallic white fine, our metallic white coarse, our pearl white, our metallic platinum, and we'll finish with the hot rod sparkle white over just the autoborn white. So the autoborn white is our ground coat for the for the hot rod sparkle white, and that's a really killer pearl flake color, and it really has a lot of pop. So it'd be cool to see that, and it's a very simple effect to achieve too. Um, so we'll start with the metallic white fine. Um, these are all going to be mixed the uh, the exact same way. Uh, I like to go 25 percent, 40 30 to the overall mix, so it's a three to one. So we'll start with our metallic white fine. Um, we'll get it in the cup and we'll, you guys can see what it looks like while I'm mixing it. Um, we're not going to show me mixing every single one of these colors because again the ratios are exactly the same. That's how I like to spray them and you guys don't want to watch me mix five different colors the same way. So we'll get this mixed. We'll get it on the panel. You guys can see what it looks like. Okay, we're going to start mixing. Uh, again, this is already shook. Uh, again, every time there's a, a bottle uh, with a marble in it, we, got, we want you guys to shake these up pretty good. So we're going to start with our mix, which I said, again, I'm touching on big gun application. So I do like going uh, three to one. So it's three parts paint to one part 4030 to 10% reducer. So I'm using uh, my LPH 80, my Iwata LPH 80. So anytime a spray gun application, that's kind of where I feel the paint performs the best. That's what we like, uh, that three to one mix. But doing an airbrush, it would probably be about 10% of the overall mix of the 4030. So I'm gonna go up to one part with my 4030. And then I'm gonna go 10% of my 4011. That's right about there. So we're going to stir this up. Just like we always say, we want you guys to mix this for at least a minute. Let it sit. The longer it sits, the better everything acclimates, everything gets mixed together, and that, that emulsifies and, and marries together to create a nice film. Okay, it's been about a minute. We got everything mixed up. Uh, we're going to get it into the gun and get ready to spray. Um, you guys know if you've seen the other videos, I do use the PPS cups. They have the built-in strainers, um, which are great. But if you're not using it, um, we do recommend straining your paint. So usually about a 200 micron, 125 to 200 is, is good for the water-based paint. Um, so just keep that in mind that we do recommend straining. Making sure just anything left over in the cap, sometimes residual paint that's dried up in the top, you never know. It's just cheap insurance, making sure everything's all set. So I got it in my gun. Uh, we're going to spray some so you guys can see what it looks like. Okay, I got my paint in my gun. Uh, again, this is an LPH80, an Iwata LPH80. Uh, we had some questions uh, on other videos about this. This is a 1-2 tip, uh, the E4 air cap, and I'm spraying it right around 16 PSI into the gun, so that's about, about the sweet spot for this gun for our paint too. Um, anything higher, sometimes it tendencies to uh, create a little funny shaped fan. So usually their recommended air pressure is, is right about where you want to be. I'm going to be about eight inches off the panel. So I just want a nice medium coat of paint and uh, we'll show you guys what that looks like. Believe it or not, that's one coat. And that's the beauty of going over a sealer white. Um, you do all the hard work with your sealer 
uh, and it should take two coats of, of white, metallic white, over that, in this case the metallic white fine. Any time that you have to do more than that in terms of material, you're going to start stacking the metallic. You're going to start stacking the pearl, and it's going to cause more problems. So if you can do a ground coat with our sealer, or at least color keying your sealer, it's going to make your life a lot easier. That's why we recommend, that's why we're so adamant. We do these videos, and we're always talking about ground coat and, and like your base coat. It's, it's a lot easier to do this in the sealer white and if you have any imperfections or if there's anything you're trying to get rid of, it's a lot easier to sand it. That's what it's designed for. It's, it's really like a, a primer, essentially, that once it's dry, you can sand it with a piece of 800 and it's going to powder right up. You sand it with 400, it's fine. I don't really recommend going any coarser than 400 if you're going to put base over the top. Um, but it's a lot easier to do all that prep work with the sealer rather than trying to sand out imperfections with the metallic. You know, again, you're, you're trying to fix base coat and the base coat isn't really designed to, to be a primer. So the sealer is, is the thing to do, it's a ticket, it's easier in the long run. You get a nice ground coat down and then when you put your color over that, it should be two coats and you're ready to go. So this is pretty much ready for another coat. So I'll throw another coat on and uh, we'll see what that looks like. See, I'm not overly wetting that. That's a medium wet coat. Um, and again, with, with that ground coat of the sealer, it, it, it just makes everything that much easier. So we're going to let that dry up. I'm going to tape out my next section. I'm going to do the coarse, the pearl, and the platinum all the same. You guys aren't, don't really have to see me do that. But when I get to the hot rod sparkle white, we'll, we'll stop and you guys can see uh, how we recommend putting that on. You can see the difference, really. It's just a technique in terms of spraying it. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, everyone, we're back. Uh, all these sections are sprayed. So we did the metallic white fine, we did the metallic white coarse, we did the pearl white, and we did the metallic platinum. And now, like I said, we're going to talk to you about our Hot Rod Sparkle White over our Autoborn White sealer. Um, we love this. It's a very clean, crisp, pearl white flake. Um, it's a very easy uh, finish to achieve. Uh, just the technique is a little different. I'm not doing anything different with the reduction, the way I mix this. It's the same thing. I did 25% 40-30, so it was three parts paint, one part 40-30 to 10% 40-11. Um, same air pressure in the gun. The only difference is I'm going to put it on more like a guide coat because this is essentially a, a wet flake. It, it's in its own carrier already so we're not trying to you're not going to get coverage with this color you're not going to bury uh, black or dark even if there was white and gray you wouldn't cover the gray with this flake that's not what is going to happen so I'll show you guys it just kind of goes down like a guide coat um, a little bit more coats are, is what we prefer but again less material in those coats so like three to four four coats is really a sweet spot because you really want that glitter effect so I'm going to show you guys what that looks like that's that's one coat uh, again I'm faster with my hand speed. I'm a good eight inches off the panel. Uh, I'm not trying to get a wet coat of paint on because it's just going to cause more problems. You're not trying to get coverage. All you're trying to do is put this flake down. Uh, each one of these was about two coats. Two coats over that white sealer and it, it looks fantastic. It's nice and even. Uh, there's, there's dry time. You can see that first one I did, it was dry. Just blowing a little bit of air over it. It was dry in less than a minute. You know, again, if you're lighter with your coats, a little lighter with the gun, um, you're going to have faster tape times and faster dry times. So there's no reason to put that much material on when you already have a color key base. So I'm going to show you guys here with the light because I don't know if it picks up on there. But there's definitely, you can even see the overspray here of that, that flake, that glitter effect. And that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get that white glitter with, with the cool, crisp, white Autoborn sealer as the, the ground coat. And it's going to look really cool. So I should be ready for another coat. I'm going to do another coat. 
and you gotta see what that looks like. another coat so we're gonna do two more coats just like that um, one thing I also want to touch on is I talked about uh, strainers uh, I, and I said 200 to 125 sometimes 125 is a little too fine um, the strainers that we have in these the PPS cups are the 200 micron uh, strainer they come in two different versions uh, sometimes the 125 is a little too fine it actually the 125 is for water but sometimes with, with pearls and, and the metallics that we have it's a little too fine so for the actually for, for this for the hot rod sparkle I take the strainer right out so if you have a larger strainer before you pour it in the cup you can strain it through that um, I just find that sometimes the flake does get caught up in the mesh of the strainer but it's only in the hot rod sparkles uh, everything else is, is totally fine but just a food for thought you know if you guys are wondering why you're spraying and it's not coming out it, it could be because it is getting caught up in the strainer itself so a little more air that's already dry I'm gonna put on another coat So that's three coats, we're going to do one more. Alright everyone, we're back in the booth. It's been about an hour since our last coat went down, so everything's nice and dry. We're going to put some 2K automotive uh, clear over the top so you guys can see what it looks like. I'm um, not quite sure if you can pick up the difference in the booth lighting. The, the difference is really subtle, but that's kind of the beauty part of what we are going after to show you how you can create texture with different metallics. Um, so just to recap, we go over, this is our metallic white fine, this is our metallic white coarse, this is our pearl white, this is our metallic platinum, I think that one really stands out, and uh, this is our hot rod sparkle white over our Autoborn sealer white. And that gives you the biggest flake effect, uh, but again, it's, it's kind of hard to see it. So we're going to put some clear down, you guys can see what that looks like, and then we'll try to get it outside so you guys can see what it looks like in the sun. Hey everyone, we're back, we're outside, we've got our panel cleared, we have a beautiful sunny day, so hopefully you guys can see, really see the difference in the metallics and the colors that we have. I'm going to go over the, just an overview real quick about the colors and give you a little bit of uh, detail and nuances of these colors as well. So to start, we have our metallic white fine, we have our metallic white coarse, we have our pearl white, our metallic platinum, and our hot rod sparkle white over auto born sealer white. So the two metallics, the fine and the coarse, these are very bright, clean whites. It's just a one-dimensional color shift. It's just a bright, nice ground coat for, for doing graphics. Uh, when we step to the pearl, you can see it's a little bit yellower in terms of the, the brightness and the clear, the cleanliness of the white. Uh, and that's because of the pearl. That's just the nature of the pearl. So if you look close, there's a little bit of green, there's a little bit of blue, there's a little bit of, of a red color shift, but that's that prismatic, that pearl effect. Uh, the same goes for the platinum. The platinum, you can see, is obviously it's a little bit darker than the pearl. It's a, it's a cool color, but you, again, you have that prismatic effect to it. Uh, when you step over to the Autoborn Sealer White with the Hot Rod Sparkle White, that's a large pearl flake effect, and it's, again, very clean. It's a very cool, bright, clean white with a lot of sparkle to it. So if you're doing graphics, especially with candies, um, these three options would probably be the best, the, the metallic white fine, the coarse, and the Hot Rod Sparkle White because of that lack of multicolor effect. It's just a nice, clean, crisp uh, ground coat. Sometimes the pearls have a tendency, any of the pearls, um, have a tendency to, to affect the candy because of that prismatic effect. It has that red shift, the color shift to the blue and all that through that spectrum. Sometimes it's going to change the candy in a, in a way that you didn't expect it to change it. So sometimes that might it's a good option maybe or, or sometimes just be aware that sometimes it'll affect that, that final color of the candy because of the transparency. So 
that about wraps it up. These are our metallics and our white uh, line of colors. Uh, this has been another episode of Base Coat Basics. I'll see you guys next time. So we have metallic white fine, metallic white coarse, our pearl white, our metallic platinum, and hot rod sparkle white over Otterborn sealer white.